The Monuments Men. During World War II, the U.S. and our allies saved thousands of Europeans and Jews. But you may not know, the Monuments Men saved over 5 million works of art during this time. The Monuments Men, a team of 350 art scholars, went overseas to save famous works of art and monuments from the Nazis and Allied bombs. The Monuments, Fine Arts, and Archive section of the Allies not only saved Europe's art, but they also saved Europe's culture. These monuments are not merely pretty things, not merely valued signs of a man's creative power. They stand for a man's struggle to relate himself to his past and to his God, said George Stout, a founder of the Monuments Men. The work of the United States and our allies may have saved Europe's people, but the work of the Monuments Men saved Europe's history and humanity. Before Hitler was immersed in territorial and dictatorial power, he was a lover of art. But after he was rejected by Vienna's Academy of Fine Arts because of his unfitness for painting, his dreams of becoming an artist were crushed. His brain that once had the imagination for painting would be dominated by evil plans for the Nazi Empire. Hitler's love of art never died. A dictator gaining power and territory, his Nazi soldiers began to loot museums, churches, universities, and private collections for famous works of art. This great art theft was led by Nazi Alfred Rosenberg. Him and his men particularly stole anything of cultural value from Jewish families. The Nazis stole anything from musical instruments to famous paintings by Michelangelo to stained glass right out of the Strasbourg Cathedral. The Nazi leaders used the museum's inventory as a shopping list. They stole works from da Vinci, Rembrandt, Picasso, and other masters of the imaginations. The Nazi leaders not only stole art, but they also burned and destroyed many works of modern art. Hitler hated modern art because it stopped him from pursuing his career in Vienna due to his own traditional style. 1939, right before the war officially started as the Nazis invaded Poland, Hitler began to make plans for his grand museum called the Führer Museum in his hometown of Linz, Austria. In 1940, German Field Marshal Kiedel ordered a demand that all cultural property of occupied Germany would be under the ownership of the Nazis. Later, with the issue of the Nazis looting art becoming more of a disaster and the damage to Europe due to bombings becoming more severe, a group of art directors met to discuss the ideas of the Monuments Men and how to stop the deterioration of Europe's art and culture. An art scholar at the meeting, Paul Sachs, had created the Department of Conservation and Museum Technology. George Stout, one of the main founders of the Monuments Men, was the director of this department. Stout was then inspired to create the Allied force called the Monuments, Fine Arts, and Archive Section of the Allies. After the bombing at Pearl Harbor, art directors realized that their museums aren't as safe as they seem. In effect, a group of Allies and Franklin Roosevelt approved and established an organization with connection to the military to identify and protect works of art stolen by the Nazis. After the bombing of the Cathedral Cities in Great Britain and the falling of the Monte Cassino in Italy, the Monuments, Fine Arts, and Archives section was established in 1943. The unit was made up of 350 men and women from 13 of the Allied countries, including the U.S. The team of art scholars, museum curators, architects, archivists, artists, and historians definitely were not your common soldier. The Monuments men were mostly middle-aged volunteers with very little military training. The Monuments Men were originally established to assist the combat troops during Allied attacks to protect churches, museums, and cultural artifacts from damage. The MFAA helped the combat soldiers determine where to and where not to drop bombs throughout Europe. But the military thought that the war was about saving people, not about saving culture and art. They believed that if the Monuments Men told them where to not drop their bombs, this could affect if we won the war or not. But if all of Europe's culture and history was lost due to bombings, would the US and allies really have won the war? The argument was, is it really worth to save art over a human? As the war went on and allies made their way across Europe, the Monuments Men discovered that millions of works of art were being looted by the Nazis. The Monuments Men's goal became to find and return Nazi looted art to their rightful owners all across Europe. By early 1945, Hitler's power was fading and the Allies were able to discover the looted art more easily. Late at night on April 6th in 1945, an American Jeep came across two women out after curfew in Merkers, Germany. While riding them to the next town, the soldier asked, What is that in that mine over there? The woman replied, Or, meaning gold in French. Two days later, the news of the mine was reported to two monuments men. Robert Posey and Lincoln Kirsten entered the mine with other Allied soldiers and discovered a tunnel full of gold. 
There were so many bags and bars of gold, you couldn't see the end of it. In another passageway, the Allies had discovered tunnels and tunnels of art, all organized by size. There were works of Byzantine mosaics and ancient Greek statues and famous paintings stacked from wall to wall like at a poster at the dollar store. The explosion of art was not observed in the Merkers' mind. It was hurriedly packed away and returned to their rightful owners all across Europe. The news of the treasure spread and support for the monument's men grew. The Nazis stole works including the all-time famous Mona Lisa, Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper, and the original manuscript of Beethoven's Symphony No. 6. All of these were uncovered by the monument's men. The cultural artifacts were uncovered spread out among Europe. The MFAA found many of the stolen works in crates in abandoned buildings, mines, remote castles, and other mysterious places in some hard-to-reach places like the Austrian Alps. Many of the five million works of art looted by the Nazis were hidden in mines including the Alta Sea Salt Mine in the Austrian Alps. The Alta Sea Salt Mine dates back to the 1100s. With its salt-filled walls, the mine removes all the excess moisture, making Alta Sea a perfect place to hide and store valuable art. Knowing of the great conditions for preservation, Viennese museums were the first known to store art there. Later, Hitler gained control over the salt mine. Stolen artwork arrived from 1944 to 1945. The Nero Decree was a demand from Hitler that if Nazi Germany fell or Hitler was killed, then all works of art, monuments, and infrastructure would be destroyed. The demand was a threat when Nazi Governor August Egerber added undetonated bombs to the valuable collection of art in the Alta Sea salt mine. When word of the silent threat spread to General Eisenhower and his troops in April of 1945, the U.S. 3rd and 7th Armies and the Monuments Men headed to the Austrian Alps to save the art, despite the harsh mountainous conditions. Hitler then committed suicide on April 12th. The Monuments Men and the troops reached the salt mine and fell into tensions with the Nazi Governor Egerber. He had sent a team of soldiers to detonate the bomb stored there. To stop Governor Egerber from demanding the detonation, they contacted a Nazi official of higher command that could stop Egerber. The official Otto Hogler demanded that the bombs be removed. August refused. After a threat to Egerber's men and the miners, Egerber removed the bombs from Altasi. Once the monument's men entered Altasi, they uncovered 6,500 artworks including the Ghent altarpiece, Michelangelo's The Madonna, and the art of painting by Vermeer. Just like at Merkers, the art would be distributed back to their private owners and museums. With news from Rose Vallon, a French museum curator, the famous art was also hidden in the Neuschwanstein Castle. The U.S. 7th Army, along with Monuments Men Robert Posey, Lincoln Kirsten, and James Royermer, headed higher into the Austrian Alps. First, the army stopped at a monastery that held the overflow of the art from the Neuschwanstein Castle. There were works by Rembrandt and other famous artists, and that was just the overflow. So much art was looted by the Nazis that it took the Monuments Men two months for them to empty out this hiding place for the art. The castle held 49 packed train carloads full of stolen art. The art there was stolen from France, one of the main places that the Monuments Men pinpointed for looted art. Also, not only did the Monuments Men dig up a tremendous amount of art looted and hidden by the Nazis, but they also rediscovered art that had been missing for centuries. One million works of art that had been missing before the war had been uncovered. Even after the war was over in 1945, the MFAA still had a lot of work to do. The majority of their work was after the war and until 1951. The Monuments Men stayed overseas working to not only clean up the mess of the art world, but also to restore Europe's culture. The force worked together to restore Europe by returning famous art to museums and private collectors, and by organizing art exhibits to not only bring art together, but also to bring people together. The conditions in Europe were harsh after World War II. Fallen buildings crumbled in the streets, and an empty plot where someone's home and possessions used to be, where their history and legacy had been. The Monuments Men's job was made harder with the roads between towns being destroyed by the war. It was more difficult to transport valuable art and communicate with other art directors in Europe. In the end, close to 5 million works of art were uncovered and returned to their homes. 350 underdogs, 5 million works of art. When the Monuments Men returned to their home country in 1951, the art scholars took on important jobs in museums like the Metropolitan Museum of Art. In 1954, a treaty was signed at the Hague Convention of Protection of Cultural Property in the event of armed conflict. The treaty states that during armed conflict, cultural art of a country cannot be damaged by another country. Today, the Monuments Men Foundation is still around, uncovering and identifying lost art around the world. Their goal is to preserve our art and our culture.